Wendy from Studio Lou. I'm back today with this new series. Um, it's going to be an alphabet challenge. I'm going to go through the alphabet and just share uh, different kinds of art and crafting techniques. And so today is A and we're looking at applique. So applique is an ornamental needlework technique that is um, often used, um, it's usually pieces of fabrics in different shapes or patterns that are sewn on or stuck to a larger piece to form a picture or a pattern. Um, it's commonly used in decoration and quilts or garments and it can be done with hand stitching which I'll be doing today or also on a sewing machine. Um, it's primarily used in textiles but it actually can be used in several other mediums including clay um, you can uh, use it when you're doing pottery when you're whenever you're attaching a smaller piece to the outside of the main clay pot um, so today I'm going to get started on uh, just using up things in my stash because part of my goal while I'm here in this um, quarantine situation <laughs> is using up the things I have rather than buying new things. Um, so I think that's an important thing right now because I think we don't need to be making purchases that we shouldn't in such a financially daunting time and also it's nice to give a break to workers who are having to um, pack these things, ship them to us, deliver them to us. So um, I think looking around your house uh, you can often find a lot of great stuff to work with. So today what I'm working with is um, scraps of felt that are left over from other projects. I've got some wool felt, I've got some acrylic felt. Um, I'm going to do sort of a little woodland toadstool kind of um, applique and embroidery scene on here. So this is actually, um, we'll see how successful I am getting this in this hoop. This is a, a vintage hoop um, and it's the cling kind of hoop so it doesn't have any kind of um, a mechanism that clamps or screws the fabric in. So in the event that this is a failure I will just pause the video and go grab a new hoop but um that will uh, hopefully mostly be handled in post-production and you won't see this. So this is actually a scrap of fabric that I got from a textile store. It's a sample. Um, I got a whole bag of these samples and this is um, called Flanders Khaki. It's 70% cotton, 30% acrylic, um, and it should fit decently on, on this surface. So I'm trying to decide what side to use. This is really soft, um, but I like the color of that. So I don't know, I think I'll go with the soft side. Um, so today my materials, if you want to pause and follow along with me here, I've just got my needles. I have um, a container of different size needles here that I'm going to use for sewing. Um, I have sewing thread in three colors, red, white, and green, um, because those are the kind of color themes that I'm going to be using on this piece. Um, and I've got two colors of yarn some green and some white. Um, this will be to sew the little um, white dots on the red felt of the toadstools and this will be the green for the grass. Um, I'm just going to do some kind of experimental stitching with that. Um, and then I've got a few different colors of uh, felt to create these mushrooms, sort of red, um, dark forest green, white, kind of a creamy color, and um, this sort of uh, ochre yellow. So um, applique originated from the Latin applico, I apply, and it was subsequently translated from French applique to attach. Uh, historically, it's been used as a way of strengthening worn um, areas on a project um, to try to essentially patch a hole or lengthen the the lifetime of the the item that um, you're trying to repair. So let's see how successful I am with this hoop. Oh, and I forgot to mention fabric scissors. You need fabric scissors for this. So. We put the bottom hoop underneath and then just drape the fabric. Make sure that this label is not going to be there because we're going to trim this afterward. So let's see how this hoop 
is going to work. This is a relatively thicker fabric, so I don't know if it will lend itself to this kind of project. Yeah, it's sort of struggling. Let's see if we can be more successful flipping it. So pull it out again and then try to cram the white one inside the brown one. Yeah, it's um, maybe going to be too thick. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, we're back and I have a new hoop. So this time I'm going with a four and a half by nine oval shaped hoop. Um, I've got it on here. I just have to tighten it up a little bit. Sorry if I get off camera a little doing this. I just have to get this good and tight. Which takes a few minutes. It's a lot of fiddly turning. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so once that feels good and taut, you can give the fabric a bit of a tug. Just pull it over, hold your hoop down, and just give it a little bit of a tug on all sides. You can also choose to trim the fabric at this time if you'd like, but I'm actually going to wait um, a little bit, I think. We'll see how fiddly it gets uh, while I'm stitching. While I went to the studio, I also grabbed this big roll of um, pre-felt. So this is a thicker than your average craft store kind of felt. This is um, a felt that's been... Um, made from wet felting, lying down wool and just felting it together so it's a little bit thicker. You'll see your average felt is quite thin. So um, we'll use that maybe for some some leaves or something. We'll see. I actually haven't planned this out really at all. I'm just going to kind of go with the flow so I know that I want this to be um, sort of a toadstool type scene. So we'll get started with the red. Um, so what we'll do is we'll fold the felt here and create kind of a mirror image. So we can actually use the bottom edge to just kind of cut out a toadstool shape. Now that's probably going to be a little too long it's a mirrored image so we'll just trim some of that off and then we have this and I think we will make the stem of this one white or possibly cream So applique is actually seen in um, blankets in cultures from all over the world. Um, it's a it's a technique that goes back a very very long time. And there's three types of stitching in applique, um, which I, I will show a couple hopefully during this video. I'm also going to be kind of free forming it a little bit. Um, there's the straight stitch which should be about 20 to 30 millimeters from any edge that you're doing. Um, that's just literally sewing or like a, almost like a blanket stitch around the outside of your applique piece. And then there's satin stitch, which is all around the overlapping edge. Um, you might want to glue or um, straight stitch that technique first or use some fusible um, interfacing. Okay, so we've got this. Now we'll use the bread piece as a guide and we're looking to kind of create that bottom gill section of the mushroom and the stem. I want to give the stem kind of um, a bit of a curved dimension here. Felt is a really good material to do applique with because it doesn't fray. Um, that's one of the important things that you have to consider when you're doing applique if you're using a fabric is uh, using some kind of method to prevent fraying. So you're looking at either turning the edges of your fabric over and um, 
using either a fabric glue or starch or um, pre-sewing them down so that the um, nothing frays. Okay, so we have the base for one toadstool. And then maybe, um, maybe we'll do a second toadstool. Using the same piece of felt. Um, let's see, I'll just clip this. What shape do we want this one to be? Relatively similar, or maybe a little bit taller and a little smaller. Maybe something like that. There we go. And perhaps the stem of this one is this nice color. There we go. I'll cut it. So. There we go. Then, um, do we want to cut anything else out right now? No, let's just start with these guys as is. So, um, we'll start with the red. So I will thread a needle with red thread. So the third kind of applique is called reverse, um, where you're attaching materials um, that are sewn together and then you're cutting away the top material that covers the um, the materials beneath so that you're sort of, pull, it's almost like a relief, like you're, you're showing something that's underneath and you're stitching around it and then you're cutting away from um, the space that you have stitched around. In India, um, there's an applique technique that they refer to as katwa. It's very popular in Bihar, India. Of course, India is the home to so many beautiful um, textile and fabric techniques. Okay, so we have red thread. So what I'm going to do is just remove one of these so it's not too fiddly to hold on to while I sew this one on. <clears throat> okay so if you're looking to have kind of perfection which I'm not I like the handmade um, look of things that <laughs> I'm trying to achieve here um, you'd want to use a like a very fine thread possibly a silk thread that will the stitches will sort of disappear into the fabric a very fine fine small stitch as well so we'll go ahead and pop the needle through and it will hold the knot at the back so this is a good spot so I'm just going to do um, the straight stitch for this so this is going to be like um, probably just a piece that I use in a journal or in a frame uh, so it doesn't have to endure the rigors of any kind of a clothing wearing washing situation I think if it did um, realistically I would be using my sewing machine I'm not um, someone who does a lot of hand stitching for the purposes of um, clothing. So you see I have a couple stitches in here.
Okay, so we've got the red piece sewn down. Now I'm going in with some white um, to create larger stitches um, on top, almost like a, an embroidery technique, but a very simple one, um, just to create the gills of the mushroom. I may go over this with um, a dark brown thread as well. But I'm using the white for now to both attach the piece and to get an idea of um, how I should try to go ahead and sew on the gills. Okay, so we have the first tote stool all sewn on. Um, so now we get to the complicated topic of the back of your work. So there are definitely embroidery and cross stitch purists out there who believe that all of your stitches should be um, sort of invisibly ended and there shouldn't be any long strands like this or loose strands um, that, that sort of isn't the tradition of the neatness of the work. Um, you can look up um, sort of invisible backing and perfect, you know, backing for embroidery, cross stitch, applique. I am not that kind of purist. Um, <laughs> I believe in things being kind of fun and, and relaxing and enjoyable and for me being a perfectionist just just uh, it doesn't uh, coexist in, in the world of creativity really for me if I have to spend all my time making sure that every single one of my um, threads and everything is trimmed and neat and tidy then I definitely have no interest in the process because it gets too long and time consuming so to me this is fine I probably could have not gone so far with that one and if I wanted to I could do a little stitch to hold it down but again I am absolutely not concerned about it if you were concerned you could iron on some um, interfacing on the back to just hold everything down um, you could even glue fabric to to the back but for the usage that I'm going to be getting out of this um, probably in making a journal or framing I'm not going to be worrying about it um, so anyways now we have this first mushroom on so this is what it looks like and I'll go a little closer to the camera so you can see my stitches hopefully the lights not too strong I'll just turn it a little um, so you can see where all the little ripples are that's where there's a stitch so it's rippled like that because this is a thicker fabric and it's felt if you were using um, fabric you could um, you know keep your stitching very 
even, uh, very small stitches and don't tug um, or you'll get these little ripples. I actually purposely wanted these ripples because it's going to make it look a little more 3D and give it a little bit of a raised texture, which is what I want on this nice thick fabric. Um, so it'll be very nice to touch and, and have a little bit of dimension. So um, then I've got the, the white in the gills here. So um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. I'll speed things up and I will sew that second mushroom on. Okay, we have both of the mushrooms sewn on now, both toadstools. Um, so next I'm going to create a couple little um, applique pieces to just demonstrate uh, the satin stitch style. I'll make them very simple. Um, so what we'll do is just create um, a little circle here maybe, or a little seed type shape, go with like a seed shape, and then um, do a smaller one out of white, okay, make that a little bit more the same shape as the other one, a little thinner. There we go. Okay, get these scraps off here and maybe we'll lay this on top of here like that. And that'll just be kind of um, maybe an abstract decoration. Um, we'll do another one. This one might be a little more round. A little bit too wide for a circle. I'm trying to get a half circle here. It's kind of fiddly to cut felt. <clears throat> so thick. Actually, let's do a little heart, maybe. A little heart will be easier. Just gonna snip the middle down. Okay. Yeah, that's cute. So maybe this here, and hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure if I like that or not. <laughs> it, maybe it needs a friend um, to look right. Okay. 
Maybe we'll make a leaf. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay. That's better. So, um, we'll take the heart off for now and we'll leave this leaf over here too. So this is going to be the satin stitch, um, method, which is sewing over the edges. So again, if you're using a fabric and you're doing this, you will have to first secure your edges in a way that will prevent them from fraying, um, with like turning them over, ironing or starching, um, them down so that you don't have the frayed edges of like cotton, uh, so that the fabric won't be all frayed. But with felt, we don't have that problem, and that's why I chose to do this project with felt, because I didn't want to um, bore myself or you sitting here and turning edges of fabric and ironing and starching and stitching and so on. But some of this work is just nice kind of slow work anyways, and I think that that's actually a really nice practice for right now. Slow stitching and doing things like visible mending. I think that a lot of it's really um, good life skill that's kind of taking off right now while we're all hanging out here together. So I'm going to stab in through the back just like I did before. So this time um, with a satin stitch where I would have gone sort of this direction in a little tiny stitch to go all the way around on top of the fabric. This time I'm actually going off the edge of the fabric into the back fabric. So you have a visible, it doesn't have to be visible, but I want it to be visible. You could do a very tiny stitch that would still just get lost in the fabric, but I'm going to make my stitches visible. Um, so you'll see that they just, they go right over the edge of the fabric. Let me make sure I'm, there we go. So those stitches will go right over the edge and they will secure the fabric down. So I'm just securing the um, ochre yellow fabric first, and then I'll go back and secure the white fabric. So I'll pick up the white fabric just to show you what it looks. Um, like double stitch because you could actually do this at the same time you sew the white fabric down on and then when you bring your thread back through you could do it on the outside on, on the backing fabric and just kind of go together like that so that both are secured so essentially that's the satin stitch technique so I will finish this up and um, speed through.
Okay, so we have all of the appliques sewn down. Um, I've shown you the satin stitch and the, sorry, the satin stitch that goes over the edge and the straight stitch that stays on the piece. Um, I'm not going to do the reverse um, because it's a little bit um, finicky, but you know, imagine if you were trying to do this, that we, say you've got the negative here, right, of, of this. So say that I wanted to do um, some kind of a, a reverse stitch. So basically I could do it here with this. So I, you can still see the material underneath. Um, actually, that's a bad example because it's not showing you the technique. So I'll use a new piece of th this piece of felt here. And imagine we were trying to do this. It's exact same, this square with the leaf in the middle, but we had a new piece of felt. So what you would do is you would take this, this piece and you would lie it on top of it. Then depending on how you want it to look, you would do um, a, a straight stitch around this edge like this. And then you could choose to cut away these edges so you would have um, some kind of an, a yellow outline around the green leaf. Um, or if this was part of your, your whole overall um, technique to keep this whole square, you would, for your design, you would stitch again around the leaf and then around the square edge and that would then become part of your design. So if you imagine a lot of quilts are created this way so that you have really nice neat edges. Um, it's a little more tedious because again with fabric you've got to turn all those internal and external edges so that's the idea with reverse um, but yeah I'm not going to do that today so this is um, the final applique pieces I'm not going to applique anything else on here um, I am going to um, do some embellishment that's not applique it's more embroidery or visible mending so I will share that in this video too I will um, speed through doing that work and then maybe just have a few kind of wrap-up words at the end of this I hope that you're enjoying seeing how applique can be done Okay, so we're back. Um, I have everything attached here um, that I'm going to attach for right now. And now I'm going to work on the yarn embroidery with the white yarn um, to create the little white spots on the toadstools. So you just um, thread a needle. This is a little bit fiddly. You have to um, have a needle with um, a, a bit of a larger hole which I sort of did not bring upstairs to the uh, to the library where I'm filming <laughs> but this is decent it has threaded so success um, now we're going to go in through the back and just poke through and we're just looking to make some kind of random um, little dots here just making sure what the back looks like so we want to leave a bit of a tail to weave in so that's sufficient a couple of inches and then um, I think we'll try to make this look a little bit round you could also have some fun with it um, in your design you could make um, some kind of like X's or you could do French knots this might even so happy accident if I leave this alone maybe um it kind of made a little circle because the the yarn plies have kind of bunched up so I'm going to leave that as is and hope that I can replicate it so um let me just we'll tie the back here see what's happened is that the the yarn has um split so we'll just here we go Get things all figured out and then just tie a couple of knots on the back okay and that tightened up a little so we'll have to go back and um, make it a little more noticeable this fabric is extremely thick so it's a little hard to um, embroider on with yarn this isn't your typical um, embroidery type fabric. Let's see here what's happened. There we go. It's 
a little bit tricky. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to speed through this and just keep um, making the little stitches. Okay, so I have all of the white um, sections, the little dots on the mushrooms. The hoop's getting a little bit fiddly at this point with this thick fabric. Um, so I'm just going to set it to the side unless I absolutely need it. Um, this wearing area will go away. It's just the impression from the hoop. Um, okay, so 
I'm happy with this. I'm probably going to do a little bit of um, experimental yarn embroidery now. Choo, 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 choo. Where did the needle go? There it is. Okay. So I was thinking this, um, I find this dark green really harsh, especially with the red. I'm not a fan of red and green together um, outside of actual nature because I always feel like it looks like Christmas and it's just kind of not my aesthetic. <laughs> so um, I think what I'll do, maybe I'll try to put the hoop back on just to keep the fabric taut. Ooh, doo -doo. Okay. These guys can be a little tricky to use with thicker fabric and of course I probably could loosen this screw because I've tightened it but I'm going to try to, no, that's not. <laughs> I was trying to muscle my way through um, but okay. Maybe it's easier from the back actually. This um, fabric is way thicker than what a normal uh, embroidery project would call for. <laughs> Usually you use like some kind of a linen or an Ada cloth, but um, this is about using up scraps and struggling to do so, right? So, okay, press that down. There we go. Then just tighten it a little bit more. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't pop out of there. Because <laughs> I might cry. If it does, I might cry. Okay. So what I was thinking of doing first is maybe a little bit of grass over here. So we'll come through like this. And then I was thinking of just pop a little stitch in here. Um, like that. And then thinking about what we could do to make this keep some kind of a cool texture. So I might just let this, um, sorry, just adjusting here. I might just let this sort of stick out like that. Then do another one. Okay, I pulled the wrong thread. Here we go. Let me just pull this through and then I can keep that loose by pulling it back up again. So then we have two loose threads. So I'll go to the back and I will tie this off because we want to keep this tight at the back, loose at the front. So I'll just loosen these stitches like that.
finished all the green stitching that I wanted to do. Um, the grass and some little kind of um, plants here. And then I just embroidered over the leaves to give them a little bit more um, definition. I might go back and uh, go around the edges of this heart to give it a little more definition. Um, but I think for this video, we're good. So I hope you enjoyed seeing my little applique project and maybe you'll try it yourself. I think what I will do with this um, piece is probably use it as part of um, a nature themed or a gnome themed junk journal uh, that I'm working on. Maybe it will go on the book cover. Maybe it will be a pocket. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, my next series um, of videos will be, as I mentioned, an alphabetical series where I go A to Z uh, through different kinds of art and craft techniques. And um, I hope everybody has a great day. Subscribe if you like this video and you'd like to see more. All of my social media and more information about applique will be in the description box. Thanks! Bye.